So yes, he will take out ISIS. I, why will he take out ISIS? Well, he's not going to take out ISIS. The, um, the enemy of ISIS is who? Iran. Iran is its mortal enemy. Why? Well, you wouldn't understand it, neither do I. I'm not a Muslim. But for, apparently they insulted each other a thousand years ago. Shia versus Sunni. I can't understand it. Descendants of Muhammad have one thing. The other ones don't have it. They hate them. They've been killing each other. So Iran is a Shia nation. <clears throat> ISIS, to make it simple, are largely a creation of the remnants of the Iraqi military under Saddam Hussein, for, for want of a better description, run by the, uh, uh, the Iraqi generals who uh, were allegedly put out of business by uh, George Bush. Apparently, they were not put out of business. They're very much in charge, and they created ISIS. Then they get the lunatics from around the world, the same types that Hitler dredged up from the gutters of Germany. Uh, ISIS dredges up from America, everywhere else, all the scum of the earth. They run in there in order to rape, kill, murder, uh, and they figure they're going to have a free run with girls if they go over there and uh, that they get the scum of the earth. So you know what? Good, good luck. I hope the Iranians do take them out. At this point, I'll be rooting for the Iranian military against ISIS. What, you're going to root for ISIS now? Why? Now all of a sudden you like ISIS raping and murdering? So you see, it's a very confusing thing. I'll make it simple for you. I'll make it real simple for you. It's a strategy that was developed in, I believe we figured out, yeah, yeah, we studied yesterday in, in Afghanistan, where was it? India. 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 The enemy of my enemy is my friend. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. So the enemy of ISIS is my friend, Russia. That's all. No, I know. Putin wants to rebuild the Soviet Union. Politics 101, poli sci 101. Novices in radio will tell you that. Yay, well, no kidding. What a genius you are. You figured it out. Putin wants to expand Russia's power. Man, you should get a, a Pulitzer Prize for that analysis. What geniuses? Hey, you don't see it, Mike. It's just Putin wanting to expand the ex-Soviet Union. Then he's going to take over the world. That's all. All of the, the Connie Barkers in the media. How smart can you be? Do you know any leader of any nation that wants to shrivel its nation other than Barack Obama? Barack Obama stands alone. He's the only leader of any nation that wants to shrink its, his own nation. Every other nation wants to be bigger and stronger. This one wants it smaller and meaner, smaller to disappear altogether. He'd like us to become an appendage of Canada and Mexico if he could do it. We don't, wouldn't exist at all. So here we are, hour number three. Crazy day, crazy world. I don't know where you stand on this, but we'll do it. And what is this? One of the French heroes? Okay, let's go for this. Bruce, okay, this is amazing. Okay, you, K. Eugene in Oregon. Bruce, go ahead, please. Fire away. Yeah, um, my wife went to Umqua and Roseburg, and she got her nursing degree. But the point is, is that when you said they were checking the religion, it reminded me that the uh, guy who took down the French jihadi train is uh, from Roseburg. Oh, like my God. Home. You're the first one in the American media to put the two and two together. So it starts to look like it could be related to a jihadi, huh? I'm going to say, did anyone hear what that man just said on this show? Did you, did you hear how smart that caller was just now? That one of the heroes in France who took down that, that punk coward throwback piece of human turd who wanted to execute everyone on that train in France, stopped by three American off-duty servicemen. Remember that, that piece of Islamist turd that they stopped and they cowered on the floor once he was in a big shot with a Kalashnikov with nobody else with a gun? Remember that incident? They pounded him into the floor of the train. One of them is from this town in Oregon. Uh, you can't put two and two together yet? What, your brain is that fried? Oh, we'll see soon. We'll see very soon if you want to talk about these topics. WABC, Gerald, fire away. What's your topic? Go ahead, please. Yeah, I just wanted to take issue with you on your point about Reagan allying with the Russians. I, I think Reagan uh, sponsored that communist lost sight. Of Wait, sir, when did I say Reagan allied with the Russians? I said that Reagan opposed the Soviet Union, brought down the wall, and uh, as a result of that, the Soviet Union collapsed. That's, those are my words. No, but the point, the point about uh, uh, Reagan being uh, anti-Islamic, I think he lost sight of the prize when he 
tried to defeat the Russians in Afghanistan if, if he didn't interfere with the Russians in Afghanistan. Sir, wait, wait, I, wait sir. I never said Reagan was anti-Islamic. No, I think the point, that maybe I misheard you then, I apologize. I thought you were saying that they became our allies and our, and our friends and, and, and assisted in the fight against Islamofascism. No, no, I guess what, no, no, what I said was Russia is our natural ally in the fight against Islamofascism. Russia should be our number one ally, not our one, number one enemy. But it's because Barack Hussein Obama, we don't know which side he's on, Russia's now our enemy. And I, that's why I think we were so misguided in supporting the Mujahideen in, in Afghanistan. Reagan had them at the Oval Office. I think that was a terrible mistake. On oh, his okay, part. okay. Now that's a very good point. You're right. You're a thousand percent right. Looking back retro, retrospectively, when Russia was defeated in Afghanistan, it was with U.S. weapons, wasn't it? Absolutely. Yes. All right, so here we go. Here we go again. Here we go again. It's a repeat of history. The same morons, probably the neocons who dragged us into Iraq, who are now behind this whole idea of bring down Russian aircraft with U.S. Stinger missiles now in Syria. Can I just make a real quick point? I was reading a Churchill book, 1930. Winston Churchill said one of our greatest enemies in the future is going to be the Wasabis from Saudi Arabia. And he was so right in 1930. And this well, now you know why. What it, What are one of the first things that Obama did when he when he entered when he uh, went, entered the Oval Office? What did Obama do? But re he removed a bust of Winston Churchill. That should have told us who he is. I'm surprised he didn't put in a a, a bronze bust of the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem. Stay in the line. I'm sending you a copy of my blockbuster, Government Zero, out any day now. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Waiting for updates on the bombing in Syria and who did the shooting in Oregon. It's that simple. They're hiding it. We know two things right now about the shooting in Oregon. One, everyone knows, and one only the listeners to this show know. One, the gunman ordered victims to state their religion. Everyone knows that now. It's on a Drudge Report. He told him that after shooting the teacher in the head through a window, the gunman, gunman, still unidentified, demanded that they state their religion. Shooter is deceased, peaceful community, blah, blah, blah. Shooter ordered everyone to get on the ground. Then asked people to stand up and state their religion, then started firing. A caller in the last hour to this program said that this, this small town in Oregon is the town from which one of our American military heroes came from who took down that cowardly throwback Islamo-fascist on a French train a few months ago. Now... I don't know who did the shooting, but it's starting to paint a little picture here. A little bit of a John Nagy is starting to appear in my mind. You know, a little bit of follow the dots. And you start to trace a few dots, and you start to get a little bit of a picture. It's how most people with intelligence operate. But that's not how the news media operates. I'm just saying that if they found him with a, a, relig say a religious book in his hand, we won't say what of what stripe, but let's say a religious book, a headscarf, in his possession, they would say it's not terrorism and it's not related to a religion. And you cannot associate it with any religion. No, you're going to hear that this afternoon. Although we found the headscarf, a religious book, religious tapes, uh, social websites uh, attached to Al-Qaeda and ISIS. This is not terrorism. There's nothing to see here. Move along. It's a random incident. Another example of uh, guns in our society. Let's move it along. Then they'll have the balloons and the uh, the teddy bears and you'll forget it tomorrow. That's the world we live in. And you know something? It's not easy to deal with this. That's why I have a sense of humor and sarcasm. So pardon me if it offends you. If you don't have any sense of humor, I can't help you. Because if you don't have a sense of humor to deal with what's going on in this world with this psycho in the White House, I don't know how you can get through the day. KKAT, Utah. Bert, go ahead. State your case. You're on the Savage Nation. Go ahead. Hello, Michael. Appreciate you taking my call. I won't waste your time with my credentials, but I'd be happy to talk to you off the air on it. Let me tell you, the whole thing goes back to dollars. Back in the 70s when Nixon and Kissinger introduced, or when Nixon 
uh, took us off the gold standard and turned our U.S. our asset back currency into a commodity as a petrodollar. They sold the royal family of Saudi Arabia on it, Egypt on it, which were the two dominant forces over there. We subsequently put in the Shah of Iran, we put in Gaddafi, we put in Hussein, and we were controlling that whole area till Gaddafi instigated the gold dinar that he was going to kick out the petrodollar and make his own in there, which is why he was taken out, which is why Hussein was taken out. Chris Stevens, over in Benghazi, the reason he was in Benghazi instead of the uh, embassy in Libya is because he was meeting with Turkish officials to expose the CIA-backed rebels and the United States supplying them with gas. The United States has a long history of playing both sides against each other. We were training the fake uh, army of Assad that was firing the gas. We were also training the rebels. Assad is one of the few Hold on, this is far officials over there, and we want... Cutting you off. Hold on. I need to get you when we come back from the ends. You have a high intelligence clearance. Is that correct? You know what you're talking about. I do. And you're not, we're not going to talk about your intelligence clearance, but what you said I've not yet heard anywhere in the media. I, I implore you to please stay on the phone so we can hear more of your analysis. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. All right, the invisible president... Uh, the invisible president, nowhere to be seen on the uh, Russian bombing in Syria. Uh, the White House says President Barack Obama has been found in his briefs. I mean, has been briefed about the shooting. Sorry. Has been found in his briefs about the shooting. No, no. The president has been briefed about the shooting. Now let's go back to some of my callers. Bert in Utah to get more serious now. What you said was original. Never heard it before. You claim you have 20 years national top secret security clearance. I have no reason to doubt you. You connected all of this up to follow the money and the gold standard. Bert, please, for the sake of continuity, start from the beginning. You have a you have a full five minutes right now if you need it. Well, and the reason I'm calling you is because I'm about to make it my life's work to put Barack Obama, Eric Holder, John Kerry, Hillary Clinton in prison. And if I end up missing, I want this information out. Long story short, Nixon took us off the gold standard changed our currency from an asset-backed currency to a commodity as a petrodollar. He approached the royal family in Saudi Arabia. He approached the Egyptians. They were the two dominant forces in the Middle East. He sold them on the idea of the petrodollar, got all the other Arab countries to follow in line. We put the Shah into Iran. We put Saddam Hussein into Iraq. We put Gaddafi in Libya. And for decades... We were controlling everything. That's how the U.S. dollar became the reserve currency. And everybody that wanted to buy oil from the Middle East had to buy the U.S. dollar to trade it for oil. So it became a commodity. Well, the, the Arab culture, if you take two Arabs that hate each other more than anyone else, the one group that they hate more is the infidels. So even the Arab enemies will work together to cut out the infidels. So Gaddafi and Hussein got together and they developed what they called the gold dinar that was to replace the petrodollar. So they wanted people to buy the gold dinar that they would trade for oil. When they started doing this, Gaddafi got taken out, Hussein got taken out, and we started screwing around over there again. Assad is one of the few regimes over there that was duly elected. He wouldn't play ball with us. So as we do, we play both sides against each other. The CIA trained both the rebels and a, a false flag force that was represented as Assad's people. Hillary Clinton. Wait, 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 hold on, that that's an important point. We know that the CIA trained the so-called rebels to bring down Assad because McCain accidentally leaked that today, even though it had been leaked before. You're now alleging on this national show that the CIA set up a fake group? What, what's the name of that group? They were represented as Assad's people. <clears throat> okay, so they set up a fake Syrian army, allegedly under the direction of Assad, and they did what? They gassed their own people? If, if you remember a few months ago when the media reported that Assad was gassing the, the rebels, yes. they did a, an independent uh, study on the gas the gas that was used was not the same kind of gas that Assad had in his arsenal. 
It was gas that was being transported through Libya, uh, and